Does the colour of the light coming out of driving lights matter? Why would you care about that? Well, let's find out in this video, because I think you'll be surprised at the answer. Let's explore this. On this vehicle, I have 4,500K lights, and on this vehicle, 5,700K lights. K stands for Kelvin. So let's unpack what Kelvin means and how that can make your driving experience quite a bit different. Light and how it works is obviously a very technical subject and there's experts in that field. Now, I'm not one of those experts, but I have done some research and I've got some information that come into the two key points that I want to talk to you about today that pertain to the Kelvin. So the first one we want to talk about is the CRI, the Colour Rendering Index. How is that important to us as a four-wheel driver or somebody using driving lights on our vehicle? The CRI index goes from zero to 100, where 100 is pure sunlight. And what that index is referring to is the colour under pure sunlight. So does the grass look green under pure sunlight? Does the water look blue under pure sunlight? And that is at 100. Anything less than that, which an artificial light source will create, will have a lower CRI, colour rendering index. Now back in the day, you may recall when the LED lights first hit the market and you'd turn them on and all the leaves on the trees would look quite washed out and almost white looking and the, and the colours looked poor. And that was because those LEDs of the early days had a very low CRI. Nowadays, we're able to produce LEDs that have a very high CRI, even up towards 90 and 100, which is amazing. So what's been found is that if we have a CRI in our driving lights of around about 70, we will get a, a really good representation of the colours that we're looking at when we're driving at night. You might be asking, why wouldn't I want the highest CRI that I can possibly purchase? Well, you may for your requirement, but consider this. When you have that 100 CRI or a very high CRI, you're going to use that to make sure that you're colour matching something. So if you're in editing suite, colour matching photographs, you would want a very high colour or CRI in your screen so that you can make sure that the pictures and the colours look exactly correct. But when you're driving down the road at night at speed, you're not trying to colour correct anything. You just want to make sure that the trees look right, that the surface of the road looks kind of like the colour it's meant to be. The next area that a good colour rendering index will influence is the detail in the scene that we're looking at. So for example, you're driving down the road, it's a dirt road or any road for that matter, it's got potholes and bumps and various contours in the road surface and you're in an environment where there may well be kangaroos or lions or cheetahs or elephants coming out on the road and you want to be able to spot all of that detail in the scene at speed. The higher the CRI is, the more detail your eye will pick up from the scene as you drive down the road. So again, another reason why you want to make sure that the quality light you buy has a CRI that suits the way you're going to use the lights in your vehicle. So that's a basic understanding of CRI. Now the next point, we've already talked about it and it's Kelvin. Let's delve into that a little bit. Now the thing is with Kelvin and CRI, they actually both influence each other. They kind of, there's kind of this gray area around the two factors. So let's talk about Kelvin. Kelvin is a measurement of the color temperature of light. So a low number like say 3000 K or Kelvin is going to be the lights that we, we have in the front of the Land Cruiser here. They're a halogen light, they're a light bulb. And the light that comes off those is a very warm light. It's, it's amber or yellowish in color. Now the 6000 K light is going to be a very cool light. It's, it's going to be white and intense. What they call it is a blue light. Now it does have some real advantages 
with that higher Kelvin light output for us as drivers. And that is, it's going to give you excellent penetration. It's kind of going to have that ability to really power through the environment and get a great deal of distance out of the light. But it's going to have a negative, and that is you get a lot of what we call flashback from signage, and, and even the environment can have flashback at you, like you might have a really white trunked tree on the side of the road, and you can get a degree of flashback from that tree. Effectively, it's that reflection. Now, you may or may not like that, and therefore you may choose to look at a light that has a, a lower color temperature, like the 4500 Kelvin light, which will have that more yellow light. It's the warmer light, and it will have lesser degree of flashback. So now we have a basic understanding of how the color rendering index will work, and if we're looking for that 70 mark, we're going to be pretty happy with the lights in the driving environment. And then Kelvin, that Kelvin reference is what's going to help us understand how the light is going to work in the way we use the vehicle. So is the light going to have a great penetrating distance? Is it going to give us flashback? Which of those elements do we want to compromise on? And that's going to help us make sure we get the lights that suit us and the way we use our vehicle. So how do I use my vehicles? What lights do I like? Let's get into that right now. Well, the first thing is I like a nice, even light. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, in the center of the beam where I'm looking, I obviously want a good percentage of the light to be in that area. So let's call that the hot spot. Well, the hot spot area, I want it to be a fairly decent size and cover the majority of where my eyes are looking when I'm on the road. But from the hot spot out to the edges of the light, I want a very gentle graduation of the light intensity so that I don't feel like I'm looking at a hot spot here and a hot spot there and then no light next to it. I really don't like driving under those conditions. Now, these lights here have been provided by a company called Ultravision. They're an Australian manufacturer of spotlights and they make a premium product. And they have provided these spotlights to me so that I can do this content on them, give them some real world feedback on how these lights operate and my opinions on that. So big thanks to Ultravision for supporting me as I support them, an Australian manufacturer. The next thing that I look for is the peripheral view. What can I see out to the side of me? Well, the reason I like to have that view is when you're driving here in Australia, we have a lot of wildlife that can come up out of the sides of the road just before your vehicle gets to that section of road. The number of times that having peripheral view, peripheral lighting has allowed me to see a wombat, a kangaroo, or some other animal in the detail of the side of the road, I couldn't tell you, it's been so many times. Now the reason these lights work so well in that, in that way is in the center here, they have a lens which is effectively like a light bar. And its sole job is to put light out to the sides of the vehicle. And it does a really good job at that, but it transitions into the main light without any lines or hot spots in that intermediary area. The next thing I look for and like from a light is a light that gives me a really good intensity up to about a kilometer. After that, I feel like the light is kind of wasted. In some ways, it almost has a negative effect. And the negative is that when I have an oncoming vehicle coming towards me, I have to dip my lights from high beam down to low beam a lot sooner than I would like. So it means that I'm driving in darkness for quite a period of time. Now these spotlights here will range out beyond two kilometers. So it's like, wow, that can be And I'd almost say that these lights at 2K or beyond is almost too much light. But they, these lights do have a feature which helps solve the problem. You see, these spotlights have a high-low feature. What that means is that I can push a button and these spotlights will dip to a low beam setting, which is effectively the center light bar stays on, giving me a nice 
let's say 100 or so metres of good illumination on top of the vehicle's high beam. So that means I can stay on a decent amount of illumination until the vehicle that's coming towards me is a lot closer, then I can dip down to low beam. So that's how these lights, although they have that massive distance, address the issue of driving in the darkness of low beam until the vehicle gets to, to, closer to you. You can tell I'm quite excited about this high-low feature. Now, one of the, dare I say it, illegal things that we've had happen to us, because Mrs. Mad Matt and I have both uh, got caught with this one, is we'll dip the high beam down to low beam on the spotties, but that leaves the vehicle on high beam. So what we've got is high beam on the vehicle and low beam on the spotlights. So we'll dip them down and then we're driving along. You can certainly see enough to be safe on the road. The oncoming vehicle's coming towards us and we forget to go down to low beam. This is the interesting thing. The oncoming vehicle doesn't tend to flash you and the lights don't tend to be getting in their face. Like you could, you know when you're driving at night, you can see if your lights are getting into the driver's eyes because you can see their eyes bugging out. Well, we're not seeing that. So it's not scaring us, it's not scaring them. So it's an interesting feature, totally illegal, but uh, yeah, we should dip to low beam. I know, I know, but we keep forgetting. <laughs> the next area I look for is the up and down view, the height of the light. When you're driving through country, which is up and down hills, when you're going down the hill, to the best of the light's ability, you want to be able to see down, oh, sorry, that bug was biting. To the best of your ability, you want to be able to see down below you as much as possible. So you want the light to travel down the hill. And then you also, more importantly, want the light to travel up the hill on the other side so you can plan where you're going to drive. And these lights have an excellent feature or height in the light beam. So I do like that feature. What don't I like with spotlights? Well, I already indicated at first, I don't like hot spots. So I've set all of my piece on that. The other thing I don't like is flashback from signage and that can be quite distracting and you sort of sit there going oh, oh, oh as all of that flashback comes at you. You can also get the flashback as I mentioned earlier from trees, the road surface. If you're on a white sandy beach at night you can get flashback from that. So a really intense light can be a little bit too much and I personally don't really appreciate that. Now that's where these lights really come into their own. You see on this vehicle, we've got the 4500 Kelvin light, and on this we've got the 5700 Kelvin light, and on my race car, which many of you have seen, we've got the 4500 Kelvin Raptor lights from Ultra Vision. Just a little bit on the Raptor lights if you're interested. They are a more budget conscious light. They're still a good quality Australian made product and they do come in the 4500K as well. Now I've been running those for a number of years on the race car and I love them. Now obviously I'm not racing on the road so I don't get the sign flashback, but I do get the other environmental elements and the race car's uh, lights work brilliantly for solving the issue of flashback at 4500k. So I actually like driving under these lights, the 4500k, a lot more than the 5700 purely because of the flashback. The other thing I do like, and this is a strange thing to say, but these lights put out less light because of that Kelvin. You remember I talked about how a 5700 light will penetrate more. Well, these lights at 4500k don't penetrate as well. But I feel like I see more when I'm driving at night with these lights. I think that's partly because of the flashback or lack of from these lights. Now, very important to understand, I'm not saying there's no flashback from these lights. There is still a degree of it, but it's a lesser degree than the lights on the Land Cruiser. And the last thing I don't like, which we talked about earlier again, is a poor color rendering index. A light that doesn't give me the detail of the environment, makes the trees look washed out and all of that. Why I don't like it is it doesn't allow me to see detail in the road surface and in the terrain that I'm traveling through. It's the detail that I can see that can help me avoid a pothole, a rut, a washout, a, a rock on the road. 
and both of these lights have that good CRI and do help me see the detail, but I reckon I see slightly better detail with the 4500K light. But again, all of this is personal preference and the reason I'm telling you my preferences is to help you unpack what your preferences might be. Now, if you've made it this far, thanks so much for watching and I'd love you to let me know down below what you've appreciated about the content. Have you learned something? What was that? What type of driving lights do you run? All of that information, make a comment down below because I do read all of the comments and I love learning and hearing from you guys. Now, if you'd like to get your, set, your hands on a set of UltraVision lights or any number of other products, you can head to my website, madmat4wd.com.au and go to the gear store and we've got a few of our partners there. Now, obviously, I'm sounding a little bit salesy here, and hey, guys, that's not my intention. I really try hard to be genuine with what I, what I represent. So this is a product I've been working with UltraVision for 10 plus years. I have other lighting companies come to me and ask to work with me and that, and it's like, guys, I like these ones. I genuinely like the product, and I'm prepared to put other brands up beside these lights, and let's have a comparison, generally speaking, uh, me mates lose the fight. A mate the other day gave me a fair run for me money. Um, that was Damien on his 200 series and he had a set of fire lights on the front of his vehicle. Um, they're a, I think they're a halogen light and I, I thought yeah they're up there with these but that's the only mate who's ever come close. So these are a very high quality light. I'm trying not to sound salesy but hey I'm kind of excited about them. So let's get into a little bit of the specifications and what's really what these UltraVision lights are all about. Now they're called the Nitro Max 180s and they are their newest lights. They are they are really running some pretty cool tech. They've got, um, they've got that high-low feature I mentioned earlier, which takes a little bit to get used to, but it is a really genuine feature. I'd probably, the only thing I'd like is, or I'd say to you when you install them, maybe I made the mistake when I installed them in this vehicle, is make sure you put the switch, the high-low buttons, they're tiny little buttons, put them, two things, put them where you can easily access them near your high beam stalk, because that's naturally where you go for your high low controls. The next thing is they have quite bright LEDs. Now bright in the sense of when you're driving at night, you want those two LEDs, you don't want them staring at you while you're driving at night because that can be quite distracting. So put that controller behind the spoke of a steering wheel or something like that, but still in that position where you can get to it quickly. Obviously it's gonna depend on where you put them in your vehicle. So that's a, I love that high-low feature. I'm getting used to it and I'm appreciating it. Some of the other features, these lights come with an excellent five-year warranty. They come with their mounting brackets here, a four mil stainless steel, TIG welded. They come with a lifetime warranty. They are not going to break unless you have an accident or something, I think. I've got some of these UltraVision lights that have been on vehicles for 10 years and they are still working as good and look as good as the day we put them on the vehicle. So they're an excellent quality light in that sense. They don't shake on your, um, on your vehicle. Now, on the Land Cruiser, we do get a little bit of shake on rough roads, um, but that's not coming from the lights, it's coming from the bull bar in actual fact. So sometimes you'll see them shaking a little bit. All the lights will come with anti-theft nuts, which is a great feature. Considering you're running a genuinely a valuable product on the front of your vehicle, they do have an anti-theft nut, which is excellent. The next thing is these lights all come with a high quality uh, wiring harness and the relay and all the equipment you need to get them installed in your vehicle. They all use Deutsch plugs, which are waterproof plugs. It's, it's just, quality gear and obviously you're going to pay for the quality but here's what I'd say you buy a set of these lights you're not going to be selling them with your vehicle you're going to take them off and you're going to put them on your next vehicle and you're going to keep just keep on doing that because they're that good so they're kind of like a one-time purchase which I really do like all right guys you don't have to buy them if you don't want to all right all right guys look that's enough from me I hope you've learned something from this content I've certainly enjoyed bringing it to you in this windy environment with the sun going wild on my bald head I'm Mad Matt stay safe on the trails